Well, hello there. How are you doing today? Do you feel like taking a trip on over to Ray's house with me today and seeing what I did when I flipped his house after he bought it? Come on, let's go. Let me show you what I've done. Yes, today is a bit of a different video. I thought I would show you how I flipped Ray's house after he bought it. All of the things that I did to save money by DIYing and doing things myself. A lot of things I had never done before, but you know what? I, truth be told, I've never even flipped a house before, but I knew I could do it. I was up for the challenge and the price was right on this house. And so it was one of those deals where I just knew Ray had to get it because if he passed it up, he was going to regret it. And all it was going to take was him having a bit of faith in his mom, knowing that when I tell him I see the possibilities and I see what this house could be, that I was true to my word. And well, you tell me what you think. So come on. Let's take a tour and let me show you the house that Ray bought and all of the before and afters and all of the work that I did on it. Come on, let's go. Alrighty, so I will tell you that this was probably, I think the fourth or fifth house that Ray had looked at. And when I saw it, it was my favorite because I saw the potential in it. When Ray saw it, I'm not so sure that he saw the potential that I was seeing, he was a bit apprehensive. I knew going into this that Ray should get a house that was a fixer upper because he could get a bigger house that was within his budget that we could flip. And I knew that I had the capability of flipping a house on a budget. And so you can see here what we started with. This house was not maintained for a while. I don't know how long it sat empty. I feel like it sat empty for a bit and the neighbors were kind of doing the bare minimum of yard work, but it was pretty unkept. But I could see past all of this dirt. I knew what this house could be. And like I said, when we left this house after viewing it, Ray kind of was like, I don't know, mom, do you think you can really make that house look good? And I knew without a doubt that we could. To me, it was the foundation of what the house was, the location of where it was, the size of the house. Was there any real damage? No. You can see that we even have green grass. So this was stuff that I knew, you know, yeah, there was some patchwork and look here, we saw that there were gophers, which ended up just being a nightmare. But as I'm looking at this, I thought, okay, this is all stuff that is easy. It's not even a fix. It's about just cleaning it up. And so, yeah, let's take a look on the inside of the house. Yeah, we had gotten the keys this day, so I was anxious to get in there and start demoing and cleaning the house. Going on into this house, I will say I think that the owners of this house were the original owners and they didn't really do any decorating. They didn't ever paint. It was still the same flat white paint that the house came with. I think this was the only wall that had ever been painted. This is a four bedroom, three bath house. It had these mirrors. I kind of like the closet mirrors. They might be a little bit dated, but I like them. But this house was uh, no disrespect, it was absolutely filthy. The video is not doing the walls justice. We do have mini blinds, which I was happy with. Oddly, there were holes everywhere in this house, but there were real no, I guess I should say, there weren't really any upgrades to it. It was just lived in. And so I knew straight away that we needed to do some cleaning and painting. It had the original sheet linoleum flooring, which, you know, it, you could do worse. At least there was flooring, but it definitely needed to be changed out. The cabinets were in great condition. There was plenty of closet space. This here would be a coat closet that was right inside the entryway of the house. Now when doing 
and looking at this house, yeah, Kayla was there with me and she's so precious. I knew that I was happy with the layout and that was what I kept trying to convey to Ray was that this was a house he wasn't gonna outgrow and I love that he had an enclosed but open office here. This could have very well been a fifth bedroom, but again, you know, I'm seeing the potential. The cleanliness isn't there, but we've got a nice looking ceiling fan that is gonna go with our color scheme of the house that won't need to be changed out. There are positives here. Oddly, a mirror in a strange place, but that's gonna go down. Holes are gonna be filled when we paint this. The carpet was horrendous in this house. There were bugs living in the carpet, so much so that I wouldn't let Allie sit on the carpet. But I am loving how there is this open end cove here. Ray kind of wants to do away with this wall at some point because he's got an idea of what he wants to do with this area. But I kind of liked just how it was open. So, you know, nobody was really closed out. If you were in the office, you were still part of the living area and the kitchen. This light fixture, not my style, but it's something that we can paint easily and just clean up the glass, change out the glass. It was hung pretty low. I mean, when I tell you low, yeah, it was low. Not quite sure why, but that's okay. We're gonna fix this. It's all fixable. <laughs> this is Kayla and her personality. Please, everybody view the personality of my daughter. I just love her. Hi, Kayla. Okay, can I finish my tour, please? Okay. We have got a nice fireplace here. I am loving the framing that was added to it. I don't feel like anything needs to be done to this. Not sure how often Ray will use the fireplace, but it'll be cleaned up and this is an awesome piece here. Love that. Again, going into this living room, more odd holes in the walls. There were so many weird holes. I wanna say that maybe they didn't have a stud finder and they were using a nail to find the stud maybe. Oddly, there were these blue blinds throughout the whole house. They must have gotten them on sale. I'm not gonna say they were my favorite because they were a very odd blue, but they were in somewhat good condition. The draperies and the blinds here are not salvageable. There were a lot missing, but they were gonna come down anyway. Again, more of the blue blinds, but as I walk up, they cut them. I'm not sure why they did that. That, you know, you kind of, when you buy a house, you just kind of wonder what the method of people's madness was. But nonetheless, they're gonna stay there. There is no shortage of cabinet space in this house. And I love this desk. I'm not sure that Ray will use it. Maybe I will, but would you look at the cabinets? There is so much cabinet space in this house. I'm not sure that Ray will use it all. I may find a use for it all but this kitchen is open, it's amazing. Again, did I say there's a lot of cabinet space? I love the island here with the sink and the granite countertops. And we've got the bar area there that we can put some stools in. This granite is um, a full slab of granite. It wasn't granite tiles, so that was a definite upgrade. We've got a great stove and microwave here. Um, Truth be told, later on we found out that the oven doesn't really warm up to true temperature, so that needs to be replaced. But we're keeping it for now. But like I said, this granite has beveled edges and a backsplash, which is a definite upgrade. And the granite was in perfect condition, so that was a definite plus. We've got room for a refrigerator. This pantry here is deep and big and wow. And they left us some Jack Stack barbecue sauce. They did leave a lot of the owner owner's manuals, but yeah, so going on in, going down the hallway, I don't know that you can see how dirty the walls were, but it was pretty bad. We've got um, a nice size bathroom here with uh, a double sink. It is a very long bathroom. The light fixtures are upgraded needed to replace some bulbs and that was about it, but I feel like those don't need to be touched. They're gonna work and so those are keepers. But this is a nice size bathroom. A lot of the bathroom fixtures were just the standard fixtures, but this bathroom again has a ton of cabinet space. 
and we've got some linen space here in the hallway as well. It looks like the white cabinets were maybe an afterthought in addition. And then we've got the laundry room here. They did leave the washer and dryer. They weren't super clean. Ray was a little apprehensive about keeping them, but I really put some elbow work into them and cleaned them and they came out looking new. Again, more of that linoleum flooring. We've got two bedrooms here that are a decent size. This one has kind of a bit of a dated ceiling fan, but it's not something that I'm gonna hurry up to replace because Ray doesn't need the three extra rooms that he has right now. They're just gonna stay empty, so those are things that can be done later. This second bedroom had no lighting, in fact, not even a lamp or a light fixture, so that's something I'll have to add to this one later. Going down the hallway here, we're going into the master bedroom, which is, again, a decent size. And we've got more of the blue blinds. They must have got these on sale because they weren't true to fit. Here's more of those random holes in the wall. And when I tell you, they were everywhere in this house. It was the oddest thing. There were holes in really random places. And so, yeah, there was a lot of patchwork that needed to be done before we went in and painted. And um, this would be the master closet. It is a walk-in closet, a bit jealous of this. There were even holes in this closet. I, I don't know. <laughs> you just kind of wonder, I guess, but it's all stuff that can be fixed. Here, there was stuff like the medicine cabinet that had clearly been here for 17 years dated. It was something that I was hoping I could salvage. Um, you know, things that I don't wanna replace, I don't wanna have to, I guess. We've got a jacuzzi bathtub here that is pretty cool and a stand-up shower. Again, the fixtures in the shower will probably have to be replaced, but it's got the seating area in the shower, which is a cool feature to have in a shower like this. Yeah, that'll be replaced with one that we can turn on and off. Here is the backyard. The backyard wasn't as kept up as the front, but I knew I didn't wanna have grass in this area or in this area. These were planters that were already there. I'd probably do away with the green trees there in the corner that were half dead, keep the larger trees, and probably just make some planter, a big planter area there in the back and just keep the one grass area along the side. But again, it's all stuff that's just a little bit of work. Here you can see I started the demo. I ripped out all of the carpeting throughout the house and knew that before I even added carpeting, I wanted to get this house painted. And so I left the tack strips down, wasn't sure if the carpet guys were gonna want those still, but I did remove the carpet to save on money and to get going with painting. I wanted to do painting so we didn't have to worry about uh, the carpeting and there was carpeting in this bathroom and there was a lot of mold along uh, where the bath and shower was but yeah so we have got a blank canvas here that is ready to be renewed here is the gray paint that we actually painted the entire house with I did not paint the house I paid a contractor to come in a friend of ours that had a sprayer because I knew it'd be easier for them just to come in and spray I wanted the ceilings done, I wanted all of the closets done, I wanted the wire shelving done in each of the closets, and so I wanted every door redone, and so it was worth uh, the $2,700 that I paid to have the entire inside of the house repainted. We went with just a solid gray for every room and every bathroom and every closet in the house. I decided instead of replacing the blue blinds, Blinds are not um, inexpensive. They are pretty expensive, especially when you're going with custom sizes. And so I would guess that that's why a lot of these uh, blinds, there were two in a window because it was pretty expensive to do one the size of each window. And because they were in pretty decent shape, I just cleaned them and decided that I would hang blackout curtains over them Ray is not somebody by any means that likes natural light coming into his house. He's never really been like that. Kind of a hermit, um, lives in a dungeon, I'd say. I think we all kind of do. 
And so I knew that blackout curtains were a must. And because we were going with the color scheme of kind of that modern feel of the gray, white, and black, since I had done the walls gray, the doors and trimming were white, I figured I'd accent each of the rooms with some black blackout curtains. When I hung the curtains, I wanted the curtain rods to be at the same level for each window. So it kind of stayed uniform throughout the house. So as you looked and your eye followed the curtains, all of the rods were, I guess, the same um, distance down from the ceiling. And I feel like that just kind of makes it look finished and gives it a more polished look. And so I got all of my blackout curtains on Wayfair. Wayfair has very budget-friendly curtains that are in different sizes and lengths. And because I needed so many different lengths for Ray's house, I found them on Wayfair. It was a great buy. The curtain rods are all from Walmart. Every curtain rod and I guess end cap is the same. I just bought as many curtain rods as I needed for each of the windows. So here you can see this is the front yard after or before, and this is the color of the house before I decided to go ahead and surprise Ray with having the house painted. He had seen a house down the street that he really liked that was kind of a slate gray and wanted to know if it was possible to do that. I wasn't sure if it was in the budget, and so it was one of the last things we did because I wanted to hold off and see if we had it. The paint guys that did the inside of the house offered us a really great deal on doing the outside of the stucco and the eaves. And so I went ahead and did it. You can see the color, like I said, it is a slate gray. And I decided to go with white for the garage doors because they were really oxidized. I knew in doing the slate gray that it was really gonna make the brick pop in the front of the house. I feel like the brick kind of got lost in the color before. And so, yeah, I wanted, again, to kind of stick with the theme that we did with the inside, but go with the darker gray for the outside, the white trim, and really make that brick pop. And it did just that. And you can just see how amazing the house looks after it was painted. It was night and day, and it really wasn't all that expensive to do the outside of the house. I was glad that we had the money to do it. I bought um, a huge uh, couple skips of rock there that you can see, and I'll show you later, but look at the before and after. It is amazing what color does. I did later go and uh, reseal the brick just to make it shiny, bring back some of the color. You can see that we went ahead and mowed the lawn and pulled all of the weeds and the planters and yeah, really got this house looking amazing. But look at the difference just by painting the garage doors white. It really just makes it clean. It kind of modernizes up, I guess, the look of the house. And yeah, Ray couldn't have been happier with the way that it looked. The rocks that we got are called California Gold, and so I wanted to use those, we wanted to use those to fill in the planters. We did add a planter up against the house. We wanted to remove some of the grass that had gone all the way up to the window in the house itself. You'll see here how there was grass um, in the after or before picture all the way up to the house. In the after picture, we went ahead and pulled out the grass, had curb crafters come out and put a little bit of curbing there just to add a planter. And in that, we added more of that California gold rock. And we did that to the backyard too. As we were doing it, we had a furry little friend here that was pulling up the dirt in the planters that we had just placed rock in in the backyard. Those gophers, I tell you, they gave us a run for our money, but they sure were fun to watch, truth be told. I mean, yeah, they're pesky, but we did end up getting rid of them. So here on the inside is the medicine cabinet that I told you I was hoping to repair and salvage. With this, I took some sandpaper, sprayed some primer in there and sanded it and smoothed it out, got rid of that rust, gave it a nice good matte finish of paint and voila we saved the medicine cabinet. A big money saver in flipping a house is doing a lot of the work yourself. 
I have put in peel and stick flooring before. And so with raised flooring, I knew I had the capability of doing it. It was just a matter of time. This is a wood flooring, a peel and stick wood flooring that I found at Home Depot online, had it shipped and dropped off at the store. It is actually a textured laminate flooring that is peel and stick. It's easy to cut, it's easy to install. I'm not gonna lie, did not pull up the flooring, the previous flooring. I did, however, patch any of the holes that were in the linoleum that would have made it uneven, sanded it down, and I placed this flooring right over it, no primer, no extra adhesive, and I just went to town laying this flooring, and I tell you, it stuck, it has worked perfectly, I've had no uneven problems, Ray was a little bit apprehensive, but in the end, look at how amazing this turned out. Ray ended up really being happy with the way the flooring turned out. This was the kitchen flooring. It was one of the first areas that I did. I really wanted to get some of the more important living areas done before Ray moved in and worry about some of the smaller flooring areas. Um, but yeah, this was my first time actually doing a kitchen this big and this shape and I'm pretty proud of myself the way it turned out and I love this flooring. It couldn't have gone better with the carpeting and the pink color. The entryway by the front door, it wasn't a must redo, but once we painted, got the carpet in, it didn't really match. It cost me a whopping $50 to redo this. And yeah, truth be told, I didn't remove the tile either. Went right over it and look at how amazing it turned out. This is Ray's bathroom where the carpeting was. There was carpeting by the bathtub and the shower and there was quite a bit of mold. I treated the mold, pulled out the carpet tacks. There was some nails. I went ahead and pulled those out. With that came some holes, but I went ahead and patched the holes with a cement patch, sanded them down, and again, added more of the flooring in his bathroom. This was again one of the spaces in his house that I felt needed to be done before he moved in so that way he could enjoy a nice master bath. And so, yeah, I did all of the flooring by myself and I enjoyed every second of it because I like to see the fruits of my labor and how it turned out. The guest bathroom, I did the same. And before you know it, it was now moving day and Ray got to move into his house. We were ready. We got the bulk of what needed to be done, done. So let's go take a look at Ray's house. So come on in, let's take a look. Painted the front door white. Kind of wish I would have done it red. And this is Ray's house when you walk in, fully furnished and decorated. This is the front door. There was a window there, so we put a curtain there because there were more of those blue blinds. When I tell you we put black curtains everywhere, we did except for this bathroom. This was the bathroom before and this is after. This is Kayla, Allie, and I's bathroom that we use and I did get the flooring done in here because it's a bathroom that we use often. You will see throughout this home tour that there were a lot of my DIYs, but the colors couldn't go any better with the gray uh, paint that we picked out. Adding brown and beiges with the gray really kind of changes the look and the feel of it. And like I said, this is a four bedroom house. So this bathroom off to the side of that bathroom, this would be Allie's bedroom. That headboard there is one of my previous DIYs that I just couldn't bear to part with. And so, yeah, you can see that, you know, it's slightly furnished. Here is another one of my favorite DIYs, a Jenga block and canvas panels DIY. But these rooms are good size. The black curtains cover up the blue blinds for now. Like I said, those will be fixed later, but here is the view um, of the entryway before and after. Going on into, uh, the front area of Ray's house, we've got that opening there in the wall and that's the wall that Ray wants to have removed because of this here pool table that goes perfectly with the decor of his house. Um, I will tell you that 99% of the decor outside of my DIYs is decor that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. Um, Hobby Lobby always has like 50% off their wall decor and table decor and it is very budget friendly. I find or found that I decorated Ray's whole house 
for under $500 each of the rooms. You can see how the curtain rods, you know, really line up along each other. And uh, these curtains definitely do what I needed them to do by hiding the blue blinds. Um, but yeah, I feel like when you're doing something like this, it's really important to do those fine details of making sure that all the rods are the same distance from the ceiling. And this is the open concept that we were super happy with. Now you will see over here that his dining room table is there. It used to be where the pool table was until Ray purchased the pool table and there was no other place to put the pool table. So because there was so much room over here by the sliding glass door, we figured that would be perfect place for the table so we could eat at and his pool table would fit perfectly here. We still need a bit of room over there so that wall will probably come out like I said. But yeah, this whole area is just so open. Everybody gets to be together while maybe cooking or eating or watching TV, playing pool, or if they're in the office. And this is a view of the kitchen area before. And here it is after, again, one of my latest DIYs for his coffee station. And yeah, his stove cover isn't finished yet. Still a work in progress, but Yep, just needs to be painted, but would you look at how amazing and homey his home looks from what it looked like before with just a little bit of work and DIYing, it, it was worth it. I would say that this was a very, very budget-friendly flip. I love that bar there where there's bar stools. It just gives you an added seating area so when I'm cooking, the floor turned out amazing in here. I am so proud of myself for this kitchen and the corners. Uh, moving on over into this area here, you'll see that we did kind of try to stick with the concept of an office here. It's still, again, a work in progress. This is Ray's first home. He is a definite Marvel fan, so I think a lot of the decor on the walls in this room will be switched out with some of his marble, Marvel memorabilia. And of course, Biza has a big full basket of toys there. Can't leave him out of it. But I just love this open office. I think it is such an awesome concept. And yeah, it's just, again, open to the whole house. So nobody is really secluded from family time, you know, because just look at how open this is, right? I mean, to me, open concept is everything. And so it's just a great family, I guess, gathering spot. Going down the hallway here, you will see that we've got the linen closets here. And I'm glad that those were an afterthought and added in here. It's perfect for sheets. The bottom one, I believe I used for extra blankets, throw blankets. And with Ray, I'm doing the same thing using cube organizers for the cabinets to keep everything good and organized. We've got uh, the long bathroom here. I did not finish the flooring. You can see that this was the flooring before. It was a blank canvas, but this bathroom will be done. The carpeting that's on the floor is to help with Ray's sensitivity to cold from the neuropathy. So we put those there just so he's not getting shocked when he walks. Um, but yeah, this is the bathroom, more of the decor from Hobby Lobby that was super budget friendly just so he didn't have blank walls. If it was up to Ray, he would have kept the blank walls. It was me that it was bothering. These are in and out canisters that had to make their way into Ray's house because he worked there for so long, couldn't leave those out. But yeah, I'm pretty happy. These are two more of the three extra bedrooms and here we have got the laundry room. I did not finish the linoleum in the laundry room, but we did have an extra piece of carpet. So I just kind of added that for now. That'll be another project that I do on a day where I don't have anything to do. More of the linen cabinet space that you can't complain about. These two rooms here, they have turned into Kayla and I's room. This room here is Kayla's. When we are at Ray's house during his cancer treatments or during this journey he's on, sometimes he just wants to be at home in his own bed. And so we've kind of converted these rooms into rooms that will work for us so we each have our own personal space to escape to. I did, I used crates for end tables, Dollar Tree laundry baskets, and uh, 
I use the plastic Rubbermaid drawer containers from Walmart that are about $20 so we have a place to put our clothes. I splurged on some budget-friendly Roku TVs so we each have our own TV in our room. Again, just so we have an escape in our own personal space, but these rooms worked great. The beds are air mattresses um, that have mattress toppers on them, foam mattress toppers. Going down into Ray's room, more of the decor from Hobby Lobby. I don't even know what style that is. Bohemian? I don't know. But this is Ray's room before a decent sized master bedroom with a ceiling fan. And this is it after. There is a crate in there because Beza Boy does like to sleep in his crate with the door open. This is really just dad and Beza's domain, their comfortable place. Ray does have drinks in here, so when I'm not there, he doesn't have to go to the kitchen to get his alkaline water or his Gatorade, but he's got his gaming desk there. He's got an open bathroom here where you can see I finished, oh wait, we gotta take a look at this piece. Yep, he's a bachelor. There's no woman, so no judging. It's his house and yeah, he decorates as he likes it. But this was the bathroom before with uh, the carpet and the blue blinds and this is after with the new flooring. And um, yeah, you can see the difference there just before and after and using the curtains to cover up the blinds and act as decor. This is the before of the toilet room. And yeah, I don't think I show the full after of that bathroom, but yeah, it was just a little bit of paint, a couple decor pieces and new flooring. Here in this linen closet, there was ca carpeting on the bottom there. And so I just went ahead and followed through with uh, the linoleum foam flooring going all the way through and it's a great storage area for Ray. Here is his closet before when I had them paint everything they painted everything on the inside with the sprayer of the closets I believe white or gray I'm not sure let's take a look I think maybe it's gray is it gray yeah he did do gray in the closets and so they even sprayed the wire racks because they were so dirty after I cleaned them and yeah, he's got a nice big walk-in closet that I'm pretty jealous of. Truth be told, it's got a plug in his closet. And so yeah, this is Ray's house uh, that I have taken time to flip. And it's been kind of a fun first flip, a learning experience nonetheless, but I enjoyed doing it. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Uh, with me going on some of the things that I did and how I saved some money. And yeah, this is where we live uh, when we're not at home. One day you'll leave this world behind, so live a life you will remember. Here, here to that. Thank you for going on this tour of Ray's house with me. As most of you homeowners know, when you do own a home, it is always a work in progress. I feel like we got the majority of what we needed done, done so Ray could live comfortably in it and enjoy the fruits of his labor. And the other stuff, well, it'll just get fixed and done as I have time when we're over there and I can't sleep. I hope you all enjoyed the tour of Ray's house and I hope that maybe I inspired you to do some DIY in, in your house instead of hiring out. Just do a bit of research and challenge yourself and I say try and do it because you know what? The feeling you get after you've done something and you know you did it yourself, there's no better feeling. If you all are looking for more DIY inspiration, how about some organization inspiration of my attic? Yeah, take a look at what I did this time last year in my attic that had 17 years of clutter in it. Oh my word. Yeah, go ahead and click on the end screen to the video over here and it'll take you to, yeah, that task. <laughs> Until next time, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy everything on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, you know what I'm going to say. Stay positive, please, because I am. Bye for now.